All right, so here I have a three of a kind. Uh, if I click on it, it'll add them all up for me. I get 17. I also have four of a kind working, but I'll show you that in a second. Hopefully we'll get a six. Hey, we did. Okay, so I got four, four of a kind. If we add these up, that's four times six is 24 plus three is 27. Click on four of a kind, I get 27. Yeah. We're trying to get our program so at least we can do this much. It's uber importante. How about mixing two languages like that? It's really important that you get this right because this is the hard part. So I'm going to go into the J frame. OK, so here's my layout right now. I've got everything on there finally. Uh, new game button here on the left. OK, so here is where we added a few more things. Uh, we, we had done this one, roll button that's set enabled. So we enabled the roll button. We clear and disable the hold buttons. We clear the hold array. And then this is the new one, disable all score buttons. So if you're before the first roll, you don't want to let the user score at that point because they haven't rolled anything yet. So we need to add this method to our list of methods. So disable all score buttons. Basically, there's two sets. There's the one for the upper scoring categories and the ones for the lower, lower score categories. Remember that the upper score categories is a one relative array. And so you really have to make sure you get this right. You want to start with one, and then your condition that uh, you test to see if you stay in the loop has to be less than or equal to. That's atypical, right? But on the bottom, the bottom array is zero relative. You start at zero, and instead of less than or equal to, you say less than. And that will get you all the lower scoring categories. And all we're doing there is we're looping through them and setting the enable flag to false. So going back up then. So we've added this, disable all score buttons. Now before the second roll, they've rolled one time. So we need to give them the opportunity to hold dice. So that's what this one does, enable hold buttons. You can score right after the first roll or before the second roll. Say you get a Yahtzee first time. We have to enable all the unused score buttons. Now notice I said unused. Because we don't want to enable them if they're used already. They can't click on them anyway. So if we go look at that, this one here is similar to that one just above it. But enable all unused score buttons. And what it does is it loops through all the categories. But note that this time we have an if statement. And we're saying this. If it's not already used, if this category is not already used, that's where the not comes from. If you were listening to the Java 1 lecture, that's a logical operator. So if it's used, and then we put a not on it, so we're saying if, if it's not used, that's when we enable it. But we only enable the categories that haven't been used yet. Yeah, so if I run it right now, um, roll buttons enabled. You can't hold anything because you haven't rolled yet. You can't score anything because you haven't rolled yet. So you click on the button. Oh, look at that. Now they're enabled. <coughs> I can score it this time or not. If I do score, they get all disabled again. These get cleared. Now we're ready for the next roll. roll. And see, only the ones that haven't been choose yet are enabled again. So that's what those methods do, is they turn them on, make them available to click on, or shut them off when it's not appropriate. So it's kind of cool the way it works, actually. Yeah, how does that work? Well, this is the code about that. And I put in some, uh, some uh, comments in there that might help out a bit. OK, so back up to our use UI state management. So we've added, before the second roll, the, we enabled the whole buttons. We enabled all the unused score categories. I haven't done anything before the third roll. Maybe nothing needs to happen there. I, I can't remember. But this is new. After the third roll, we need to uh, disable the roll button because they've rolled three times already. Remember, we went and we deleted the, the roll number variable. The reason we don't need that anymore is because we're using this uh, manage UI state to, to control whether that button is active or not. Yeah, you have three rolls, but is there, is there anything on the user interface that needs to change between the before the second roll and before the third roll? And I don't know if there is. 
But I left a slot there in case we run into something. But I can't think of anything. Because the, the hold buttons are still enabled. The score buttons are still enabled. Is there anything different? After the third roll, certainly we want to shut off the, the roll button. So that's new. So I'm going to take that out now. But that's something I added that was new. Kind of see how I'm thinking about all these things. Uh, game over still needs some work. Here is the same. Last time we talked in the video, we did these three. Clear and disable the hold buttons. Enable the hold buttons and clear the hold array. All those were done before, but here they are in the video. Here's the ones we just added. Disable all score buttons. That's so that they can't score unless they're after the first roll. Here, this enables all the unused score categories, so they have a choice of things to score with. That's what this one does. Okay. So that's new. The roll button, again, we remove this roll button, or roll number, because we're keeping track of that in the state engine, or the state machine. And that's what's going on here. And again, we're removing this. If you haven't already, there is no roll number anymore. So we'll get rid of that. Uh, next up is, well, what happens when they click on one of those scoring buttons? Well, here we have the hold buttons. That's fine. Text boxes. Now, last time we talked about the three of a kind button. That's a little bit complicated. So I want to start with, or I wanted to talk today about something a little bit less complicated. Or it doesn't look less, less complicated. But here, here it is. Uh, They've hit the ACES button. Uh, this is the upper score category, the ones category. So what we do is we assume the score is zero. And then we have a, another index I. OK, so now we have to say, OK, in the game model, I want to make it look like this first scoring category is used already. So what I say is, which category I want to set? That would be category one for the ACES. And I want to set it to true, saying that it's been used already. Because we we've just hit the, the score button. That, that means this category is now used. So we have to show that. Next, uh, we, we take our game into the scoring state. You've, you pressed one of the score buttons. We have to switch, switch it over to the scoring state so that they can't press more scoring buttons. In the scoring state, it disables all the buttons again. So we have to do that first thing. Here we loop through all the dice. So we go from 0 to one less than the number of dice. And for each dice, we're going to get the value and see if it's equal to 1. If it's equal to 1, then we're just going to add 1 to it. If it's not a 1, we're going to ignore it, because this is the aces category. And you're only supposed to add together the 1s. So that's what this does. Now that we know what the score is, we go to the game model and we set that score to whatever we calculated. So for the upper score category for aces, we set that score. Okay, and we'll go into the game model and I'll show you what that method looks like. Here, uh, we figured out the score. Now we want to show it on the user interface. So we go into our text box array for the upper scoring categories. We index to the first one and we set the score there because we just figured it out. So that will show it on the screen. And then the last thing, you have to check to see if you're at the end of the game. So if that was the last turn, if it is, if it's not the last turn, then you go to the before the first roll state. If it is the last turn, then we go to game over. So there's lots going on there. But watch, if we want to create, say, the one for the, the twos column, we don't have that one yet. So I'll show you how to do it. You go to the twos button. That's this one. You double click on it, and it will create an event handler for you. See how it created this? Next up, you take this code that I just showed you, and we're going to copy it. We're going to copy it. Uh, I think it's this one. And we're going to put it in here. Button 2's action perform. You have an extra. Yeah. So here's the button 2's action performed. And again, this is the same, that's the same. This time, we're setting upper score category number 2. So we change that to a 2. So the 1 becomes a 2. And then here, we check to see if it's equal to a 2. And if it is, we add 2 to the score. 
So all I'm really doing is going in here and changing the ones to the twos. Here is another one where we just change the one to a two. And this one as well. Okay, so I just did my twos categories. Let's see if it actually works. All I did was just go and paste it in and change the ones to twos. Obviously, that's not the best way to do it. We're going to talk about that later, but here I am running it. Let's see if it, it works for the twos as well. Okay, so I roll. No twos. Oh, there's one. No twos. No twos. So, so I'm going to use it for this for twos anyway. The expectation is when I click on it, I should just get two because it adds all the twos together. It doesn't add all the dice together, but the twos, and I get two. So here's one, still nothing, still no ones. So I click on ones, and I only get one, right? I'm trying to get three of a kind. I have two fours. There's a third one. Fourth one, so I can use that for four of a kind. Roll. I have fives. Roll. Three fives. Four fives. Well, I've already used my four of a kind, so I'm going to use it for three of a kind. And see how the UI is taking care of itself. All we have to do is uh, send it through the different states. Yeah, three fives plus you add all the other, all the other dice gets added in. So it's kind of nice. You usually want to use three of a kind for like fives or sixes because they have more points. Okay? So that's kind of cool. And now we're ready to roll. We don't have any of these other scoring categories working. Notice how I can select them over and over again. <laughs> so we still have to fix that. But at least the ones that we've created are looking pretty good. Now let's go over to the game model to see what was added over there to support all this. This hasn't changed these constants. Here's where we create all the internal scoring arrays. Here uh, is three of a kind. We've talked about that hasn't changed. Just for fun, I also put four of a kind in there. The only thing really different is the number three in here, there, becomes the number four in there. Okay. But these two methods are the same structure. So you could add that if you wanted to. We had set lower score category created, but we didn't have this one created. Set upper score category, so that's, that's that one. Also, this is new. Set used upper score category, whether or not it's used or not, so I added that. It's just the same as this one, except you change the word lower to upper. This method here, add them up, is kind of in the wrong place. This really should be in the dice class, so I'm going to move that eventually. I also added uh, some accessor methods to figure out whether, whether it's been used or not. So it gets one for the upper score categories and the lower score categories. You're trying to figure out if something's already been used. This one's new. At the bottom, we added a current turn number. And so I've added the accessors and mutators for that. Here's how you get the current turn number if you want to get it. And then there's a mutator that just adds one to the current turn number. So it just increments it. So a few things got added to our uh, game model. Nothing, nothing too difficult, but you can watch the video and figure that out. OK? Um, if you do uh, want to finish up four of a kind uh, on the other side of the deal, Okay, so here's the, the button event handler for when the user hits the button. And this we did already. See that? And all I did was make a few modifications here for four of a kind button. So I double clicked on the four of a kind button and I added this code. Set the score to zero. Set the use scoring category for four of a kind instead of a three of a kind. Go into the scoring state. Uh, check to see if it is a four of a kind. If it is, you add them up. Set that equal to the score. If it's not a four of a kind, it doesn't 
doesn't change the score, so the score will still be zero. So we go to the game model and we set that lower scoring category. We show it in the user interface in the text box to the right of the button. And then we try to figure out whether we're on the last turn or not. If we are, we, we go to the game over state. If we aren't, then we go be to the before first roll state. And so it's exactly the same structure as three of a kind. The only thing different is these, this constant and this call here to is four of a kind. And that's pretty much it. So we already have this code, but we're expanding it to four of a kind. Now, if you think about it, a Yahtzee is, well, it's a five of a kind, right? So Yahtzee is going to be the exact same thing, except you're checking for five instead of four. Okay. Yeah. Anything? No, there's some things that Java isn't really suited for. For the most robust language, I'd say it would be a C++. You can program pretty much anything with that. A language is just a tool. You have to look at your problem first before you choose your language, which one you're going to go with. Because some languages are more suitable for certain types of programs where others would work better in another language. When I teach computer science, you know, we talk about Java. Mainly I'm talking about how to program computers. How do, how do you have to think to program a computer? Languages come and go, but if you can think computationally or think about what I need to do, you can do that in any language. You just need to learn the syntax for the language. You'll find that a lot of computer languages, the syntax was, are very similar. It's just how do I figure out the problem? This is pretty complicated, right? Figure out four of a kind and score it. But if you can do that in Java or C Sharp or C++, if you look at all those three languages, they look a lot like this. <laughs> okay, so just because uh, Java isn't suitable for everything, it is suit suitable for certain things. Java is good for handheld computers if you're doing Android, and it runs on almost every device out there. So it's not fast, and it's not that elegant, but it is functional. And so if you need to make it work on a Linux box or a handheld or a PC or whatever, Java is a pretty good choice. Uh, but if you want to make it specific for it, like a handheld computer and make it go really, really fast, Java is slow compared to the other languages. So you probably choose a different language at that point.